Off to my right is a bar plot. Now, what is amazing about this, for example, if you look at that bar plot, you see a control, something that says EC and MC, evening chocolate and morning chocolate. Now, what I want to bring your attention to, or I'd like to bring your attention to, is basically looking up the upper portion right there, the reduction in caloric intake towards the top, as well as the reduction in cortisol levels. And we're gonna focus primarily more on the morning chocolate group. What does morning chocolate mean? Morning chocolate means upon awakening, within a one hour window, the participants consumed 100 grams, 100 grams, just give you a perspective, ready? Let me grab this real fast, 100 grams. Now, I don't want to promote a brand, but 100 grams of chocolate. To put that in perspective, this bar that you see right here is three ounces, 85 grams. 100 grams, wow. And keep in mind too, it was milk chocolate. Now, the researchers basically wanted to use milk chocolate in the study as opposed to dark chocolate because a lot of studies have already been dark chocolate, done on dark chocolate. But however, though, they wanted to see if similar effects could be achieved with milk chocolate. Now, although dark chocolate had benefits beyond milk chocolate, obviously, milk chocolate, just the same, beyond my personal bias, and trust me, I have a lot of biases reference to milk chocolate, especially reference to the high sugar content, but just the same, wow, it was incredible. And still, it's important information, especially for individuals to know because the benefits yielded were so dramatic that I had to overcome my own personal bias in basically presenting this research to you. So again, attention to the bar chart or plot. Uh, look at the stress hormone, or the cortisol levels, I should say, as well as the reduction in total energy intake or caloric intake. So to proceed as follows, starting the day off with Chocolate could have unexpected benefits. Eating, again, that's drop the biases there, and doesn't mean dark chocolate may not outperform milk chocolate in certain aspects, but I would like to stick to the study parameters and the outcome of the study in particular itself and not add dimensions to the study that are beyond the methods and methodologies of the researchers because it's important to stick within that uh, parameter. But to proceed as follows, anything outside of that uh, is what we call publisher bias. And publisher bias would mean I'd be adding my own hypothesis or conjecture in addition to the research performed here. But to proceed as follows, eating milk chocolate every day may sound like a recipe for weight gain. But a new study of postmenopausal women, that doesn't mean it could be anybody, just they happen to do the study on postmenopausal women. They didn't say it was limited to postmenopausal women. They just happened to do the study on postmenopausal women. Uh, found that eating a concentrated amount of chocolate during a narrow window of time in the morning may help the body burn fat and decrease blood sugar levels. Bring your attention to that is a randomized controlled crossover trial. For those not familiar, that means it's a really good study. But to proceed, I want to go into a little bit more of the parameters first before I look at the outcome. And the outcome. We're going to look more at the abstract because it gives a little bit more detailed presentation, which I personally believe is needed uh, due to the fact of uh, our basic personal biases in reference to a high sugar chocolate. But to proceed as follows, we chose, quoting, 100 grams of chocolate to achieve an approximately 30% of the habitual total daily caloric intake in the volunteer study. Based on a previous study performed in animal models showing that a dosage of chocolate that compared, or those are chocolate that comprised a 30% of total daily calories was able to entrain, keyword here, the circadian system, the circadian system. And based on the chocolate dosage in a previous study performed in humans that used 100 grams of chocolate. How much is 100 grams again? To get perspective, this is only 85 grams. All right move forward i'll keep it close all right the milk chocolate consumption this is the breakdown of the chocolate this is still a decent quality uh milk chocolate um regardless or uh, given deference to the amount of sugar the milk chocolate consumption was 18.1 grams of cocoa 
31 grams of fat, 58.4 grams of carbohydrates, of which 57.5 were sugar. Again, the biases. 6.3 grams of protein and 1.8 grams of fiber per 100 grams. It contained 215 milligrams of theobromine. They didn't give a brand, they just gave the composition. 2.06 milligrams of caffeine and 154 milligrams of total polyphenols mainly epicatechin and catechin per 100 grams of chocolate. In the weeks of chocolate intervention, MC, standing for morning chocolate, and EC, eating chocolate, volunteers were allowed to have chocolate during a one-hour time window. Nevertheless, they were allowed to have any type of chocolate-free candy at any time. During the weeks of the control and the washout, volunteers were not permitted to have any chocolate, but they were allowed to have any other chocolate-free sweets. Now we move to the abstract. Again, a little detailed, but we need to bring that detail to light because, again, we have a little stronger biases involved to the fact that the amount of the sugar that's involved. However, though, the outcome is the outcome. So let us proceed as follows. Eating chocolate in the morning or evening at night may differentially affect energy balance and impact weight due to changes in energy intake, substrate oxidation, microbiota composition function, and circadian-related variables. So keep that in mind. And they measured everything from body temperature to basically energy expect, uh, expenditure uh, to calorie consumption to microbiota levels. And they did a tremendously detailed um, look at the uh, microbiota change in individuals which consume chocolate both evening and night. And they were different. Those that consumed chocolate in the morning had a different microbiota profile than those that can basically did at night, which I will give you the link to the full study so you can research it further yourself. But to proceed. In a randomized controlled trial, postmenopausal females had 100 grams of chocolate in the morning, MC, and in the evening at night, EC, or no chocolate at all, N, for two weeks, and ate any of the food at libidum, which is basically a fancy word for ate freely. Our results showed that 14 days of chocolate intake did not increase body weight. Chocolate consumption decreased hunger and desire for sweets, and, and that's a pretty good p-value if you earn the p-values, and reduced Add libidum energy intake by approximately 300 kilocalories a day during the milk chocolate group and 150 calories at night during evening chocolate. Not bemoaning the evening chocolate, people, but I want to focus on the benefits of the morning chocolate more than anything else. But did not fully compensate for the energy contribution of chocolate, 542 kilocalories a day. Evening chocolate increased physical activity by 6.9%, heat dissipation after meals, 1.3%, and carbohydrate oxidation by 35.3%. So the evening chocolate, different effect than the morning chocolate. Now we go to the morning chocolate. Morning chocolate reduced fasting glucose 4.4%, waist circumference 1.7%. Now I want you to really let that sink in. 14 days consumption of morning chocolate and about a 1.7% reduction in waist circumference. To proceed. And lipid oxidation by 25.6%. Principal component analysis showed that both timings of chocolate intake result in differential microbiota profiles and function. Heat map or risk temperatures and sleep records show that EC induced more regular timing of sleep episodes with lower variability of sleep, so eating chocolate better for sleep, a sleep onset among the days than in the morning chocolate. In conclusion, having chocolate in the morning or the evening night results in differential effects in hunger and appetite. Substrate oxidation, fasting glucose, microbiota, composition and function, and sleep and temperature rhythms. Results highlight that the when we eat is a relevant factor to consider in the energy balance and metabolism. And again, leading to the full study because I really love for you to follow or say a checkup on it because a lot of incredible information in reference to what the research looked at as well as some tidbits of information which you may find quite useful. For example, as follows. Our results also show that chocolate in the morning decreases fasting glucose. Chocolate may improve glucose homeostasis by slowing carbohydrate digestion and absorption. Indeed, cocoa could reduce the rate and extent of macronutrient digestion by binding to and antagonizing digestive enzymes. Something to think about. Which may help explain the previously reported inverse relation between chocolate intake and type 2 diabetes. So this is basically a hypothesis. In general, the timing of chocolate intake resulted in differential changes in microbiota profiles and function as shown in the figures, which you'll see in the full study. 
These differences were mostly marked by metabolites and short-chain fatty acids produced by the microbiota, indicating that short-chain fatty acids might be a good biomarker to explain, at least in part, the differences found among the conditions in addition to the effect of appetite. Short-chain fatty acids have been associated with beneficial changes in the intestinal permeability. So those basically looking to reinforce the intestinal lining may want to look at the chocolate consumption in the evening now, or a reduction in intestinal uh, permeability. Those which are looking more for, now obviously people want to say, well, I'll eat chocolate in the morning and night. But still, stick within the study parameters. Morning, once, or evening. And so basically, each one had yielded a slightly different benefit. But the morning chocolate, one is one of the focus on right now. Evening chocolate, the link would be to the full study for you to research on your own. So to conclude, I want to reiterate the benefits of the morning chocolate consumption. First, the chart. Cortisol levels, as well as total caloric intake during the day being reduced by about 300 calories, in this case about 16%. And as follows, we're looking at basically, ba -bum, we looked at for two weeks, and we looked at the reduction our results show the 14 days of chocolate did not increase body weight, chocolate consumption decreased hunger and desire for sweets, and reduced a little bit of energy take by 300 kilo calories a day in the morning chocolate group, but not fully compensated for the energy and compensation, so on and so forth. Boom. The morning chocolate reduced. I've lost my place. Please forgive me. Morning chocolate reduced fasting glucose, 4.4%. Potentially, possibly due to the cocoa. And waist circumference, 1.7%. 14 days. And increased lipid oxidation, 25.6%. Again, a lot of biases to overcome, especially myself. When seeing sugar uh, quantity that elevated or that much sugar, and basically looking at consuming a bar larger than this within one hour of waking up, yeah, I'm going to have a lot of biases, a lot of personal biases to overcome. However, if I want to look at the research and the outcome presented to you and I, wow, just the same. Again, if I want to add publisher bias, maybe dark chocolate would do the same or maybe even yield even greater benefits. I don't know. But in this case, in reference to the milk chocolate, we do know, at least in reference to the study, that it yielded tremendous, tremendous benefits in altering the microbiota in a positive light, reduction of waist circumference, and of course, overall, you know, decrease in hunger throughout the rest of the day by reduction in the average amount of calories by about 300 kilocalories a day in these test subjects in this randomized controlled crossover wonderful study. Again, links will be there. A lot of biases overcome. I had them just as well as you probably do, especially when in reference to milk, chalk, and that sugar intake. But again, without reiterating it over and over again, the link will be there for you to follow. Gratitude, always. Gratitude and humbled by the great research presented here by the researchers themselves. And I'm always thankful to have some, for have peer-reviewed articles as such to present to you. Gratitude, thank you. Look forward to you all once again next week. See you then.